Okay, you can see right away that it's going to be dropping between these two um, knit stitches. So let's just go down a few stitches. If I poked my crochet hook in here and said, oh no, I dropped my stitches and I start latching up, it's going to look like this. And I need it to look like this with the purl stitches. I need the purl stitches on the top. Well, the only other way to do that, and it's again, it's easier with a knitting machine latch tool, the only way to reform them in the other direction is to come underneath, but that's really hard to crochet like that. Really hard. So, if you can't do it like this, see, I can't even do it, you're going to have to somehow get this loop to the other side of your your little loop here and you're going to come from, you're not going to poke through, you're going to come from underneath like this. Yay for Yarn has a good video on how to do this and she makes it look easy but I can't remember how she did it so this is the way I'm doing it. So to stop talking here I've got the loop on top and I'm going to poke my needle from underneath grab that loop and pull that through. So now this this one needs to be on the other side. And sometimes it's easier instead of trying to pull it through with the hook, hook it's easier just to just grab it and pull it over. This is a little more tedious than making your rib stitches, but if you drop a stitch, this is how you would fix it if you want it to be in stockinette. Seems like I skipped a step, but I'll see my mistake if I did. I'm on the last one. I'm going to drop that over. And... very awkward but you can get it done it's not a disaster if you drop a stitch I don't like to make any mistakes on the heel or toe because they are hard to fix when you've got all that shaping done so now I've got all the purl stitches all the purl bumps are back like they should be they are a little bit stretched out here but when I work on the next column that'll all straighten out so I'm going to go on to my next even needle so let's knit the one we just fixed and drop the next one. Now I'm in the correct column. I'm gonna flip my crochet hook up. Now you see this has already tightened up a little bit. They were really spread out a while ago and it's now it's tightened up pretty normal. So never fear if you've dropped a stitch. I want to show you what it looks like uh, if you're going to be latching up a whole lot of rows instead of just doing a few at a time. So I'm fixing to drop number six and I left, I went ahead and knitted the rest of my 40 rounds and you're going to end up pulling the sock out and I've already latched down part of this but some of them I left short so I'm going to have a really long column to do but you have to um, hold the sock out of the machine and it's not as easy to put tension on the on the uh, sock you have to kind of either reach down inside like this to get to the stitches it's not a big deal but you might want to try it both ways to see which way you prefer because sometimes it gets a little hard to hold on to once the sock gets longer. But it's like I said, it's not a big deal. Sometimes I feel like just going ahead and getting over with 
all the 40 rounds so I can just get right to making the rib. And you may not want to stop you, your flow. You may want to just go ahead and knit all 40 and then do all one thing at one time. So I do it both ways. I finished all of the ribbing for my leg of the sock. And as I mentioned before, this E-wrap edging on the top is going to have to be neatened up at the end. It always does. Um, at this point, I'll study all sides of the leg and make sure that I didn't skip any stitches or if there are any strange bumps sticking out because now is the time to fix this before you start the heel. And um, if you find a mistake after you've started the heel, it's going to be a little harder to fix. So I'm going to knit a few rounds of waist yarn, which is going to serve two purposes. It's going to um, give me a lifeline in case I mess up on the heel later, which I've done frequently. If you don't like the way the heel looks, you can always take it off of the machine and rip back all the way to the waist yarn and rehang your stitches. Um, so not only are we going to use those waist yarn stitches to help us uh, shape the heel, we're also going to use it as a lifeline. So let's get to that now. Okay, I'm using Vanna's Choice yarn. It's a number four. It's a little bit smaller uh, gauge than this yarn, but it'll work fine. Sometimes the stitches will sink in a little if you don't use the same size yarn. But I needed something really high contrast, easy to see, and also not a bumpy yarn. So what I'm going to do now is take my main yarn out of the yarn guide. I'm not going to cut it because I'm going to be picking this back up a little later to start knitting with it. If you wanted your heel and toe to be a different color, at this point you would cut uh, your main yarn and leave a, a good sized tail to weave in and um, then you would um, put your new color in, knit with it, and um, and then do all the other steps and change colors as you need to. But I'm going to do a solid colored sock. I'm going to show a mistake I just caught. I had finished um, knitting and reforming my last even stitch here, but I did not finish knitting all the way to the end of the row. I looked down and I saw that I still had a few white needles left, so I need to finish knitting this completely. So I'm putting my main yarn back into the yarn guide and I'm going to finish knitting these last three needles until my black needle is back up again. Now I'm going to unthread my main yarn and I can either just drape it over the back, sometimes I'll just hang it on my tripod up here to get it out of the way. It's just going to hang out there for a while. And then I'm going to take my waist yarn, thread it into the carriage between these two needles. This needle is going to knit the main yarn and this one is going to start the waist yarn. So right at first, just kind of hold on to everything and make sure those stitches grab that waist yarn. I like to do quite a few rounds of waist yarn. I don't like it unraveling on me whenever I'm trying to uh, rehang everything. Another thing I do is sometimes I'll, when I get ready to cast off the waist yarn, I'll go ahead and run my tapestry needle through all the loops to lock them in. It makes it a little slower to unravel later, but at least you're not having the headache of everything coming unraveled on you. So I'm going to knit a few rounds in this blue yarn. I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and take this off on a tapestry needle. So I've, I've done enough rounds for my um, for my waist yarn. I'm going to leave a good sized tail and cut it. Don't cut your main yarn if you're going to go on to a solid colored sock. Put your tapestry needle. This adds a little extra time to the project, but it diminishes mistakes and headaches. So I, th I personally think it's worth the time to go ahead and just lock these waist yarn stitches in and um, then you can drop it off the machine. So this is just a basic cast off that you would do for the brim of a, a hat or um, a drawstring type of a cast off. So I'm going to let this one sink and there's no thread in the feeder so there's nothing going to be holding these stitches on. Once that hook sinks then I can grab that stitch. And I'm doing this with my left hand so it's going to even be slower. Go around and secure all of the stitches onto your tapestry needle if you prefer. I was going to show you, I already dropped a stitch on this blue yarn and I reached down and I grabbed the last live stitch. This yarn is very smooth and it is unraveling fast. So I am glad that I've decided to go ahead and remove these onto a tail. Of yarn. It doesn't matter what kind of shape your uh, waist yarn is in, just because this raveled down, I'm not going to fix it. I just don't want it to ravel down to my, my main knitting. Okay, I've dropped everything off, so I'm just going to pull it back up and pull my um, waist yarn through and take my needle, my tapestry needle off. So that's all secure. It's not going to unravel anymore. And I can, uh, I can draw it up if I want to or loosen it up. So this is the way it's going to go back on the machine just like it came off. And we're going to pretend like the waist yarn is not there. Before we go any further, I want to show how um, I calculated for the heel. I mentioned before that this heel I used 15 stitches to go around the top of the heel. And this one I believe I used 13. And that determines how thick the heel is going to be or how tall the heel is going to be. And it will move up into more than half of the foot depending on the needles. Um, the way I decided to do this is most sock patterns will tell you to reserve half of the stitches on your needles as um, the heel or the toe and so half of 22 is 11 but when you divide the 11 by 3 you get um, an arrangement like this three short rows on three short row needles on each side with five in the middle and that's going to make a very shallow heel um, so I decided to do 13 I think it's a good number and what you would do is divide 13 needles by three you divide it in thirds because you're going to have the middle of the heel and the two sides of the heel that form the wedge and so I ended up with four stitches with an extra left over. So I did four stitches on either side that I'm going to use for my decreases and increases, and I put that extra stitch in the middle. Um, you can arrange it however you want, but I think five stitches in the middle is a good number. So I'm going to use 13 needles for the heel and toe, and I'm going to do short rows on the outside four stitches and leave the five stitches in the middle to um, turn that heel and um, these stitches will knit the whole time. 
Let's see if I can point that out on a hill. When you look at this hill, which is 15 stitches, this is the point where we stopped up here. And then for the first round, you're going to knit over to the 15th or the 13th needle, and then you're going to stop and go back. And then you're going to stop short and go back, and stop short, stop short, stop short, until you're finally left with five needles or so in the middle. So that's why this column gets longer while the rest of them get shorter. And then you start decreasing back down to the foot area of the sock, and it forms the the mirror image of the top portion of the heel. It'll make more sense once it's we start knitting it. So let's get prepared to rehang the heel stitches on the machine. Okay, let's pull this sock back up and we're making sure I've rolled it all up so it wouldn't won't drag at the bottom. If you let the, the length of the sock drag onto the table, sometimes um, it's so stiff it'll start lifting the uh, sock off of the needle so I usually just kind of roll that middle up and um, these are your purl stitches these are knit stitches so this is how it came off of the machine with those purl stitches kind of rolling out and looking down inside the sock and here's my main yarn where I left off before I did the waist yarn. Now we're going to pretend like we never stitched any waist yarn. Um, we're just going to pretend like it's not there. It's only going to show us where stitches are and it's going to hold all the top of the foot until we're ready for it. So here's my main yarn. I'll get rid of all these tails. I'm going to make sure my first needle is ready to knit and I'm going to thread the main yarn back into the machine where I left off close that little door this is going to be loose right at first but we'll fix it after we start hanging uh, stitches back on the machine okay to find the stitches that need to be hung First, you locate the last stitch that you did. This was stitch number 22 right there. You can pull on the tail and you can tell where it is. That would have been the stitch that was hanging on needle number 22. So to find the first stitch that needs to go on this black needle, I'm going to pull on that waist yarn tail and wherever the waist yarn goes in, that is the stitch that you're going to grab. So my waist yarn is going in right here and coming back out and going into the next one. So I'm going to lift up that. The other way you can tell you've got it right is there's no more pink bumps down this way. If I would have grabbed the wrong bump right here and I'm looking at that, I see an extra bump down here. So you should be picking up the last pink bump next to the waist yarn. Let me pull that out and hang it on that needle. Push it all the way down to the base around those little teeth. I'm not worrying about this looseness right now. I'm going to crank the next needle forward into position. I'll back off just a little so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm finding the stitch that's hanging right there onto that last needle. I'm looking at the waist yarn that's coming out of it and going into the next one. This blue waist yarn is diving down into the next stitch. When all these stitches start tightening up it can get confusing which bump to grab. So I'm going to crank forward a little bit and tighten up my I'm pulling on the ball of yarn that's coming out of the uh, yarn guide to tighten up this working yarn. I'm going to keep adjusting that. So I'm going to get the third needle in position. I'm going to follow this waist yarn down. Grab that stitch. Make sure it's the last one on the column there, the last pink one. Hang it on the third stitch. 
crank the next needle into position. And now's a good time to go ahead and readjust your yarn that we had taken off the machine a while ago. Don't pull too tight, just snug it up, neaten it up. Okay, here's the stitch that's hanging on that last black needle. Here's my waist yarn diving down into the next stitch. I use the bottoms of these sinker posts to help me a lot to hang on to the stitches when I try to pull them up and over a needle. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Once I've located the next stitch here, I'll shove everything down below that sinker post and then pull just on the stitch that I'm wanting to rehang. And while I'm cranking the next needle forward, these are starting to knit. So I only want to hang 12 stitches back on the machine, even though we're going to be using 13 stitches for the heel. Going to get the next needle, number six, up. I don't want to go too far. Follow. It's starting to curl on me now, so I have to be really careful. I'm going to follow this, this stitch down to my waist yarn and then I'm going to see where it's sinking in. It's so easy just to want to just grab that loop right there and you would be skipping this top loop and it would start to run down and make big loops on your sock. So just just take this very slowly and make sure you're grabbing the right stitch. I tend to always go back to the stitch that's hanging, find the waist yarn, then find the stitch. No need to get in a hurry. Just be sure you only do 12. That's number 10. I think I split that blue yarn there. Might give me trouble later. Just so long as my stitch is hanging on there, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Number 11. There's my waist yarn. And see, this one is very, is exactly what I'm talking about. It's sunk so far in there that I started to grab that loop right there. But I need to pull, take my time, follow this blue stitch down and reach in there and grab that loop that's hiding. If you get to daydreaming, you might just make a mistake. And this last needle is the number 12, and I'm going to get it in position, find the next stitch, and hang it. Now we're going to start the decreasing of these rows, and I did a little short chart. Hopefully it'll help to see what's going to happen. We have rehung these 12 stitches. We did not rehang number 13 because it has to be dropped anyway. We've already knitted forward, so we've already completed this these 12 stitches. Um, I have stopped here, so I still need to go all the way to stitch number 12 and finish knitting it. And then what I'm going to do is do a uh, wrap, and what we call a wrap and turn. And then we're going to go back and stop short before we get to the end of the next one. And we're going to do that four times on each side until we're down to only five heel stitches that are knitting. And there's four stitches on either side of the heel that is going to be... Uh, removed or dropped or what we call decre decreased and uh, ready to be rehung for the increased rows. So hopefully that made a little bit of a sense, but you'll see what I'm doing.